Good morning. My name is Adam Shoemaker, and I am rector here at St. Stephen's Episcopal Church in Charleston. And I welcome you, wherever you are, wherever you find yourself, I welcome you to this virtual service of worship on this, the seventh Sunday of the Easter season. We also find ourselves today uh, in the middle of Memorial Day weekend, and Memorial Day is a holiday that has its origins here in Charleston, South Carolina, in the actions of former slaves who gathered at a Charleston racetrack in April of 1865 at the close of the Civil War to honor Union soldiers who had died there. So in that spirit, uh, I begin our worship today with a prayer for Memorial Day, a prayer for all those who have fallen in service of our country. So let us pray. O oh God, on this Memorial Day weekend, we ask your strength that we might dedicate ourselves to perfecting your kingdom of peace and justice among nations. Let us give thanks for the many blessings of freedom which we possess, purchased at the cost of many lives and sacrifices. Fill us with courage to fulfill our tasks and in no way break faith with the fallen. We commend these fallen to your mercy and ask that you give them eternal rest. This we ask and pray in your name. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Let us pray. O God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. Do not leave us comfortless, but send us your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to that place where our Savior Christ has gone before, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. The first lesson comes from Acts. When the apostles had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all of Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took them out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This is Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven. He will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying, Peter and John and James and Andrew and Philip and Thomas and Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. All these together were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let God arise and his enemies be scattered. Let those who hate him flee before him. Let them vanish like smoke when the wind drives it away. As the wax melts at the fire, so let the wicked perish at the presence of God. But let the righteous be glad and rejoice before God. Let them also be merry and joyful. Sing to God, sing praises to his name, exalt him who rides upon the heavens. Yahweh is his name, rejoice before him. Father of orphans, defender of widows, God in his holy habitation. God gives the solitary a home and brings forth prisoners into freedom. But the rebels shall live in dry places. O oh God, when you went forth before your people, when you marched through the wilderness, the earth shook and the skies poured down rain at the presence of God, the God of Sinai, at the presence of God, the God of Israel. You sent a gracious rain, O God, upon your inheritance. You refreshed the land when it was weary. Your people found their home in it. In your goodness, O oh God, you have made provision for the poor. Sing to God, O oh kingdoms of the earth. Sing praises to the Lord. He rides in the heavens, the ancient heavens. He sends forth his voice, his mighty voice. Ascribe power to God. His majesty is over Israel. His strength is in the skies. How wonderful is God in his holy places. The God of Israel giving strength and power to his people. Blessed be God. The second lesson comes from 1 Peter. 
Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place among you to test you as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice insofar as you are sharing Christ's sufferings, so that you may also be glad and shout for joy when his glory is revealed. If you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the spirit of glory, which is the spirit of God, is resting on you. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Discipline yourselves, keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary, the devil, prowls around, looking for someone to devour. Resist him, steadfast in your faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son so that the Son may glorify you. Since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the world, the words that you gave to me, I have given to them, And they have received them and know them in truth that I came from you. And they have believed that you sent me. And I am asking in their behalf that I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours and yours are mine. And I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world. But they are in the world and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me so that they may be one as we are one. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning. Annie and I feel so very blessed to be a part of the parish family of St. Stephen's Church, and we miss you all very much. We look forward to the time of reunion, which we hope will be in the not-too-distant future. And in the meantime, though, please stay safe and be well. We find ourselves today at an unusual point in the church calendar, as, of course, it is an unusual point in our daily calendars as well. On the church calendar, though, we are between the day of the Ascension and the day of Pentecost. 
That is, Jesus uh, was raised from the dead on Easter Day, and he appeared to his disciples and followers again and again and again during the season of Easter, uh, appearances that we've read about since Easter Day. But then he ascended, as he said he would, to be with God the Father. And he also, though, before his ascension, promised that the Father would send the, uh, the Holy Spirit as the Comforter after he, Jesus, ascended and was no longer present. And so we are between the day of ascension and the day of Pentecost, a strange time, uh, a time which, in which we need comforting. Uh, and thus we prayed in the colic today, O oh God, do not leave us comfortless, but send the Holy Spirit to strengthen us. So that is our prayer at this point in the church calendar and, of course, at this point in our daily calendars as well. Do not leave us comfortless. On this particular occasion, this particular day, uh, I have remembered an experience I had many years ago, 50 years ago now, and I'd like to share it with you. It has to do with um, a reason for comfort and encouragement and hope. And I share it with you in hopes that you will find it to be so as well, or at least you will find it to be interesting. It's important as a background for me to mention that um, during my college years, as with so many college students, I fell out of practice of going to church. Uh, that was down my list of priorities or even off my list of priorities. After all, I was involved in the campaign to elect the first African-American mayor in Chapel Hill, Howard Lee, I was involved also in support of the uh, campus food service workers who went on strike uh, demanding uh, higher wages and better benefits. I walked along, marched alongside those folks. And oh yes, I did a little studying too. So church really was off my list of priorities at that point in my life. As my college years uh, concluded, and as graduation approached, um, I approached my uh, mom and dad uh, seeking some assistance uh, on an excursion that I uh, hoped to take. Uh, this was called the Winant and Clayton Volunteer Exchange Program. It began when uh, young people from the United States traveled to Great Britain to help in the rebuilding process of the East End of London following the bombing of World War II. Uh, since that time, uh, an exchange program developed so that uh, young people from the United States and young people from Great Britain exchanged places and were uh, put in uh, situations where they could experience a cross-cultural exchange and do some social work as well. I was assigned uh, a settlement house in the east end of London on Bethnal Green Road. And that in particular, uh, my assignment involved a, uh, a summer camp for young people in that uh, particular area. As an aside, uh, let me say that that was the summer of the moon landing, 1969. And in England, we didn't get to see that landing on prime time, but had to wake up at two or three in the morning. Uh, however, I remember walking down Bethnal Green Road uh, the day before the moon landing and uh, uh, overhearing an exchange between two fellows walking along just ahead of me. One uh, looked up at the sky, saw the daytime moon in the sky, looked at his friend and said, how do those blokes think they can land on half a moon? But I digress. 
The camp was a good experience. Uh, those kids taught me an awful lot, as did the other uh, workers in the camp. Uh, however, the, the, uh, the camp was over uh, some 10 days uh, before the return flight of our uh, group of volunteers was scheduled. So I had some time on my hands and I determined uh, I'd like to go see the southwest of England. So I bought a round trip train ticket to Exeter, uh, packed a backpack and headed out uh, to the southwest. My means of travel was by hitchhiking. Uh, I stayed in youth hostels or occasionally camped out behind youth hostels to save money. Uh, and I had a, a great time seeing that part of the world, met some uh, interesting people to say the least, uh, and saw some beautiful sights. And also I was uh, blessed with good weather for the most part. On one particular day though, the weather turned bad uh, it was rainy, foggy, misty, cold, and I was uh, on that particular day uh, traveling along through Dartmoor, a uh, rather remote and desolate area, and I could not get anyone to stop and pick me up. Uh, what I did not know was that uh, the Dartmoor prison, uh, which is uh, home to some of the most notorious criminals in all of the United Kingdom, had experienced a uh, a prison break the day before, and so nobody was going to stop and pick up a lonesome hitchhiker along the road in Dartmoor. And so I trudged along the way and uh, uh, getting wetter and colder uh, by the minute. Eventually I came upon some uh, a wooded area, which is unusual. Dartmoor uh, generally does not have trees, but this particular valley there was a mile or so of, of woods that the road went through, so I went through it too. And uh, as I traveled through this even darker area with the trees all around, I saw a beam of light up ahead on the left-hand side. I approached that spot, uh, pulled out my camera, uh, and took a picture trying to catch the image of the, of the dark uh, forest and this uh, light coming through. Uh, I needed a wide-angle lens. I could not capture the whole of the picture very effectively, but uh, anyway, it was a it, it was a good memory uh, uh, to see uh, uh, and a good time to uh, remember about uh, Dartmoor and my experience of that day. Uh, weeks later, after I returned to the United States, I had my film developed, which we had to do in those days, uh, made into. Uh, into slides and I sat down with my mom and dad uh, showing the slides to them and talking about my experiences in England. I got to this particular slide, this slide in Dartmoor, and my mom stopped me and said, do you see that picture up there on the, uh, that uh, picture of the tree up on the hillside? Um, and I had not seen it, but there it was. There was a tree trunk with uh, one limb off to the left and one off to the right kind of like a cross uh, on the top of that hill. I had not seen it, uh, but there it was. And I had a picture made of the slide, and um, uh, there it is. As I say, it needed to be a wider angle lens. And of course, in the course of uh, 50 years, it has all faded and you can no longer see uh, what was the, the uh, tree on the top of the hillside, uh, the image of the cross for me. Uh, but that's the point. The cross is there, the tree on that hillside is there, whether I can see it or not. Uh, so that in my time of uh, gloom or doubt or uh, misty uncertainty, um, God chooses to be present with us. That is uh, the meaning of this particular experience to me through the years. Uh, and that is a basic meaning of Christianity. God chooses to be with us in spite of our circumstances, in spite of our desire to be with God. God chooses to be with us. That is the meaning of the incarnation. At Christmas time, we celebrate Emmanuel, God with us. And then at Easter, of course, Jesus rises from the dead and appears as the resurrected Christ to his followers again and again and again, as we have read 
uh, during this Easter season. Prior to his ascension to be with the Father, uh, Jesus promised that God would send the Holy Spirit as the Comforter, as the one to come and be with the faithful uh, forever after, uh, even though Jesus ascended to be with the Father. And so in this time, between the Ascension and Pentecost, uh, we pray, uh, uh, do not leave us comfortless, but send the Holy Spirit to comfort us. So I leave with you the, the reality, the fundamental understanding of Christianity, that God chooses to be with us, to comfort us, to encourage us, and to give us hope on good days and on bad days, on clear days and on foggy, rainy ones. God chooses to be with us. And for that, thanks be to God. Amen. And now, please join me in affirming our faith using the ancient words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the people. In this Easter season, we pray for the church, including Bishop Curry and Bishop Parsley. We pray for the Holy Cross Faith Memorial in Polly's Island. In the spirit of reconciliation, mediation, and the way we love, we pray for Trinity on Edisto Island, whom we belong to be together in with mission and purpose. We also pray for the Diocesan Standing Committee, Diocesan Staff, and the Bishop Search Committee. We pray for the earth, the world, those in need, and all the members of God's family responding to each petition with the words, hear our prayer. We pray, O oh God, for all the churches around the globe, for their bishops and clergy, for the newly baptized, for the believers who cannot assemble for worship or faithful endurance during this time of sorrow and distress, and for a deepening sense of your presence among us. O oh God, you are our temple. In your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, O oh God, for the well-being of creation, for the health of seas and rivers and lakes, for the Ashley and the Cooper, and for the will to care for your earth. O oh God, you are a rainbow of promise. In your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, O oh God, for peace and justice in the world, for an end to war and international turmoil, for concord in our troubled society, for the heads of state legislators and local civic leaders, that they enact wise procedures to deal with the coronavirus. 
O oh God, you are our mighty fortress. In your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, O oh God, for all who are facing the coronavirus, for all who mourn their dead, for all who have contracted the virus, those who are quarantined and stranded away from home, those who have lost their employment, those who fear the present and the future. We pray for physicians, nurses, and home health aides, medical researchers, and the World Health Organization. Fill the aching in our hearts with your merciful power. O oh God, you are our everlasting arms in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray, O oh God, for all in need, for those suffering for the faith, for those who are poor, hungry, and homeless, for those who are sick and those awaiting death, and for those we name before you here. O oh God, you are the healer of our every ill. In your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, O oh God, for the desires of our hearts, and especially for Peg Gum, Fred Pittman, Joe Frazier, Rose Adams, Herbert Drayton Jr., Bill Marie, Allison Taylor, Vivian, Alan Downs, Stephanie Canty, Stan McGraw, Lauren Booker, Marguerite, Jim Knight, Harry Titus, and for those serving in our country, including Malik Spruill, Tyrese Watson, Latia Watson Franks, Edward Pritchard, Herbert Drayton Jordan, Nicholas Loving. O oh God, you are our heart's desire in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Receive our thanks for all who died in faith and bring us at the final resurrection into your everlasting life where sorrows will be no more. O oh God, our beginning and our end in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Into your gracious and mighty hands, O oh God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Join me in reciting Psalm 63. 
O God, you are my God. Eagerly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you, as in a barren and dry land where there is no water. Therefore I have gazed upon you in your holy place, that I might behold your power and your glory. For your loving kindness is better than life itself. My lips shall give you praise, so will I bless you as long as I live, and lift up my hands in your name. My soul is content, as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth praises you with joyful lips. When I remember you upon my bed, and meditate on you in the night watches, for you have been my helper, and under the shadow of your wings I will rejoice. My soul clings to you. Your right hand holds me fast. And now some of our church's children will lead us in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Earth as it is in heaven, give us today our daily bread. And and forgive our trespasses, and forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, ever and ever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. In union, O Lord, with faithful Eucharistic people throughout the world, we offer you our thanks and praise. We present to you our souls and bodies, earnestly desiring that we may always be united with you. You promise, O Christ, to be present with us in the sacrament of your body and blood. So with confidence we claim your presence among us during this Eucharistic fast. Come into our hearts and unite us with you and one another. May your healing grace abound. Let nothing ever separate you from us. May we live in you and you live in us, both in this life and in the life to come. Amen. And now together, Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. And now, may Almighty God, who has redeemed us and made us his children through the resurrection of his Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of his blessing. Amen. May God, who through the water of baptism has raised us from sin into newness of life, make you holy and worthy to be united with Christ forever. Amen. May God, who has brought us out of bondage to sin into true and lasting freedom in the Redeemer, bring you to your eternal inheritance. Amen. In the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be upon you and remain with you.
forever. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Let us go forth in the name of the risen Christ. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.